Hello, folks. Welcome to Cudlow. I'm Larry Cudlow. So, on the eve of President Biden's State of the Union address, which is tomorrow night, Joe Biden is trapped in two major untruths. Both of them are attempts to cover up policy failures and a distinct lack of leadership in foreign policy and the economy. First up is the so-called Chinese weather balloon. I know it was an espionage mission, and I also know that the CCP is about as truthful as Mr. Biden on this. The big lie here is that these spy balloon episodes happen all the time. All the time. That's the big lie. This, according to Biden World, they happened at least three times during the Trump years. That's what they're saying. It's just that we didn't notice it. Well, saying it so doesn't actually make it so. And a whole bunch of Trump foreign policy officials, by the way, people who don't often agree with each other or with their former boss, for that matter. Anyway, they've all strongly denied that the Chinese spy balloons were dropping out of the sky in the past administration. Count them up. Former National Security Advisors Robert O'Brien and John Bolton. There's an unexpected couple. Former National Intelligence Directors John Radcliffe and Rick Grinnell. Former Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, former Defense Secretary Mark Esper, who really didn't like anybody in the Trump administration, and former Acting Defense Secretary Chris Miller, who was often critical of his former boss, and to them, former Vice Presidential National Security Advisor Keith Kellogg. All these folks, colleagues of mine, I know them well, and I've never heard them agree with each other on any topic except now on the Chinese balloon. So Mr. Biden has a big problem here. At least I should think so. I don't know how they're going to get out of that. We'll speak to uh, former director of national intelligence, John Ratcliffe, in just a few moments about all this. But like everybody in America, I'm still dying to know why Biden didn't shoot down the balloon in the first place when it first entered American airspace over Alaska, where there really aren't hardly any people on the ground, or when it came across Montana atop our nuclear anti-ballistic missile systems, where also, I don't know, maybe there's five people on the ground. Did the Bidens think that nobody in America would notice this balloon? Were they really hoping nobody would notice so that Secretary of State Blinken could have his meeting with China? Couldn't they figure out that the CCP may have deliberately scuttled the Blinken visit in order to test Mr. Biden? This is an old Chinese tactic. And does Mr. Biden not understand how this diminishes America's standing in the world? I mean, what would happen if we started sending balloons over to China? How long do you think they'd last in the high skies? Is this completely and totally unlike the catastrophic Biden exit from Afghanistan, where after leaving massive amounts of military hardware and thousands and thousands of American friends on the ground and running against his own military advisors, Biden later tried to tell the American public it was actually a great success? Really? Have the Chinese forgotten that? Doubtful. Or the failed diplomacy on the eve of Vladimir Putin's invasion of Ukraine, where Biden refused to take concrete actions, instead making idle economic threats. And, of course, the Russians invaded anyway. And then the U.S. response was always a day late and a dollar short. Now, look, some commentators are calling all this a decline in America. I don't agree. What we have here is a major decline in the American leadership. Not just a decline, but huge failures on the public stage. And that public stage includes America first citizens right here at home who don't necessarily want to see the country involved in foreign wars, but surely don't want to see the country pushed around by foreign dictators. And then we come home to the Biden economy, where, yes, absolutely, of course, the president basking in a strong jobs number out last Friday. But then he goes out and tells folks that rampant inflation was inherited from the Trump administration. Really? The last Trump CPI report in January 2021 was 1.4%. No, Mr. Biden's spending policies ran it up to over 9% in the next 18 months. And I must say, one jobs number does not make a full story. I mean, look, for all of 2022, the U.S. economy grew by only 1% last year with an inflation rate of 6.3%. I'd call that a stagflationary slump, nothing to write home about. Mr. Biden uh, brags somehow about a recovery in manufacturing. Well, 
The supply manager's report for manufacturing is down 18% over the past 12 months. Meanwhile, consumer spending fell in November and December overall. So did retail sales. So did industrial production. So did housing starts and sales. And so did productivity. And the soft underbelly of Biden's inflationary policies, even though the Fed has made some progress in recent months, is a continuous decline in real worker wages. For example, from January 2021, when real wages were rising 3.9% year on year, through January 23rd, the most recent data, real wages have fallen in all but three months and by roughly 1.5% overall. In other words, a typical family has lost $15 a week in real terms over this period. In other words, a big drop in purchasing power. And finally, with a big hat tip to our friend Liz Peake, since January 2020, follow us on this, with a population increase of 7 million people, the number of employed persons has increased only 1.4 million over those three years. In other words, we seem to have lost 5.6 million people not working. She calls this, quote, the Achilles heel of Biden's presidency. And she says low unemployment is not a great victory if millions are choosing not to work, living off expanded government benefits that increasingly require no job training. Will this all appear in Mr. Biden's State of the Union speech? Well, we report. You decide.